Now, it is challenging enough that an unbeliever challenge tells you to do something that is against your conviction. But when a popular prophet comes to you, can you withstand that? When an aged man of God who once taught you something is trying to change what he has taught before and now is saying, can you do this now? Will you change your conviction for that? When an authoritative man of God, a bishop, an apostle, whoever he may be, comes up now and say, this is what I taught you before, but I'm having a change of conviction, can you adjust this now? You see what Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 from verse 9, verse 8 and verse 9, he said, if anyone comes to you, even we ourselves, and want to present another gospel, it says, let him be a cause. It's as serious as that. I'm excited to welcome you to Tunde Fumi YouTube channel. We ask that you please subscribe to our channel for inspirational songs, powerful messages, and content that will bless you. Please do subscribe and you will never remain the same again. God bless you. You welcome this time as we take this live broadcast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day, for the privilege we have to share from your word as your spirit inspires. I'm asking that everyone that connects with this this day will be a beneficiary of the blessing and the blessedness in your word in Jesus' name. Teach us and help us to have better understanding of how you demand and request from us what you want us to do. We will work with you better until we see you face to face. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Now, you're welcome. <clears throat> I'm taking these lessons from the Rechabites. There are certain lessons we want to draw out from them for us as believers in the days in which we live. In Jeremiah chapter 35, I read from verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the day of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Here is a popular preacher. Here is an aged preacher. Here is an authoritative prophet that was asked to challenge the conviction of the Rechabite, to challenge the callings of the Rechabite. The Rechabite have made a covenant with God by the instruction of their fathers that they would drink no wine. And yet, the prophet was called and told to go to them and present wine to them if perhaps they will break their covenant. Look at verse 5. And I set before the sons of the Rechabite, before the sons of the house of the Rechabite, pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. Now, it is challenging enough that an unbeliever challenge tells you to do something that is against your conviction. But when a popular prophet comes to you, can you withstand that? When an aged man of God who once taught you something is trying to change what he has taught before and now is saying, can you do this now? Will you change your conviction for that? When an authoritative man of God, a bishop, an apostle, whoever he may be, comes up now and says, this is what I taught you before, but I'm having a change of conviction, can you adjust this now? You see what Paul said in Galatians chapter 1 from verse 9, verse 8 and verse 9, he said, if anyone comes to you, even we ourselves and want to present another gospel, it says, let him be a cause. It's as serious as that. That is, when the word of God has been presented to you and you have your conviction based on the word, no man should be strong enough to change that conviction. That is why we don't say, oh, my pastor is changing the little bit. Can I change along with him? Not at all. 
if your conviction is based on the Bible, you don't change along with the popular prophets. You don't change along with the aged prophets. You say it's old age. It's because of the old age. It's time to adjust this and adjust that. You don't change along with anyone. Paul said, even we, if we came back to you and tried to change what we have taught you before, let him be accursed. Now, go back to that Jeremiah chapter 35. There is something we need to clearly spell out because some people could say, Oh, Prophet Jeremiah brought before the people wine. It means the prophet, perhaps, is even a lover of wine. Some people could go as far as saying that, which is wrong. But then, when the prophet came before them and brought to wine, presented wine to them, it was now the wine there does not necessarily mean intoxicating drink. You know, it's not all wine that are intoxicating. Now, the wine may be the regular wine, maybe the fruit of the vine. Any juice we get from the fruit that is generally referred to as wine. Now, so it's not necessarily saying that, oh, the prophet brought to them alcohol and somebody used it to justify his drinking of alcohol. You know what James chapter 1, verse 13 says? He said, God cannot be tempted of evil if no anyone is saying, I'm tempted. And so the prophet is tempting them. It's not temptation to sin, it is just a charge to check to see if they would change their conviction and so let's that be balanced up now because if you look at that verse i mean the verses in that Jeremiah chapter 35 very well you will observe that towards the end of the verse the verses that is verse 7 you will see the people there even said we have made a covenant not even to have house not even to build a house for ourselves so it's something that it is beyond the regular conviction that they have these are people that have very strong and very in case, I mean, in, in quote, strange conviction. Look at it in verse 7. Neither shall ye build house. Now, God didn't say we shouldn't build that, but this people said we made a covenant based on the instruction of our father that we will not build a house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tent. Can you see? They make a conviction, they have a strong conviction based on the instruction of their forefathers, that they will only dwell in tent, that ye may live many days in the land wherein ye shall be, wherein ye be strangers. They saw themselves as strangers, as pilgrims in this world. So what, what are we saying? What we're saying is that some can be given very strong conviction. And they can have a strong, it's not sin to have a house. It's not sin. So, so it's not necessary that, oh, that thing is sinful. That's why God, they are having conviction against it. So we need to have that understanding. And so if you are a kind of Christian who is living on the verge of Christianity and say, as long as it's not a sin, I can do it. You know what Paul said? All things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. So that is not a sin. Oh, why is that church not doing a line that after all is not a sin? It may not be a sin. But it may be the calling of that ministry. It may be the conviction of the fathers of that ministry not to engage in such things. So that understanding of people needs to be clear. And I need you to see this also in Hebrews chapter 7. You see, in, in, in being a believer, we are not all called to the same level. We can all be Israel, all Israelites, but we have different level of category, uh, levels of relations with God. Now, among the Israelites, there are the general Israelites. And yet, there are the Levites. The Levites are those that are called into special ministry unto the Lord. And then there are the Nazarites. These ones, they don't bat their hair. And then there are the Rechabites. These are the ones we are talking about today. These ones are uncommon. They said, we do not drink wine. Even the common wine, not intoxicating drink now. Even the common wine, they do not drink. So you need to know what is God calling you to. Don't say others are doing it. Other churches may be doing it. It may not be for you. Other Christians may be doing it. It may not be for you. God has different way of dealing with individual in this kingdom. We are not called to the same level of conviction. We are not called to the same level of anointing. We are not called to the same level of ministry. God has hierarchy with which he deals and relates with us. And so look at this Hebrews chapter 7. I look at verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, 
For under it, the people receive the law. What further need was there that another priest shall arise after the order of Meshisedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Now, the word I want to bring out is this. There are the priesthood of the old covenant after the order of Aaron. And then there is the priesthood after the order of Meshisedek. Now, Jesus wasn't following the order of Aaron. Other Levites... Other priests in the old covenant follow the order of Aaron. What are we saying? The level with which God dealt with Aaron was a lower level. Aaron is firm as fault and heroes. But then there is an higher level with which he dealt and related with Meshisedek, which is a special prince from heaven. And that was the order that Jesus was to follow. What am I bringing out here? You need to know on which, on which order is God relating with you. Some Christians are doing it doesn't mean it's right for you. What conviction has God placed in your heart? Sometimes it's not even denominational conviction. Some members of your church may be at ease doing it, but for you, your spirit is not in tune. But for you, your conscience is not, is, is, is not in tune. But for you, your conviction is not in tune. So we do not fall for the critique or the generality of conviction of everybody. You need to know for yourself what has God called you into which order is it the order of the common is it the order of the majority or there is a special order that god has called you into now